like a brother to me. But I'm leaving. Can you shoot me? Go ahead. But you're gonna have to shoot me in the back. I'm Belinda Luscombe. I'm an editor-at-large at Time magazine. And we have today as our 10 questions victim, a man who has been feasted on by many types of media. There are few directors, actually about three directors, who have also been people's sexiest man alive. Wow. But there are very few screenwriters, Oscar-winning screenwriters, who have been on the cover of In Touch and Life and Style <laughs> and the, 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 probably the New York Post and had their story chronicled with such... Um, detail as Mr. Ben Affleck. Today's question answerer. What is the most useful directorial tip you've picked up from being directed and from whom did you get us? Ask Margarita Gerland of Manhattan. You know, Gus Van Sant was really good about um, sort of letting actors make their own discoveries. You know, uh, I, I always thought of acting and directing as a sort of like, um, you know, where you go to see how well you did. You know, you do a take, go to the director and say, you know, how was that? And uh, Gus's answer was always like, I don't know, what do you think? And so, you know, I, I sort of learned to let everyone make their own discovery. And once I sort of had to think about, you know, how a take was or, or how a moment was, I developed a whole new criterion for it. And uh, I don't know. He also said uh, directing was 90% casting, which I think is very wise. I, I had some great actors in, in this movie I just did. So it was, it was really, uh, I think that's wise words. That's quite, it is an incredible cast that you've got in, in, in the town. Who was the hardest to get? Um, you know, I was lucky. I got all my first choice people. Um, uh, John Hamm was first. But I did want to say one thing. You're here today so I could personally tell you that you were going to die in federal prison. So I really thought, you know, this was kind of a linchpin thing. If I got John, he's such a, you know, he's so handsome, everyone else would want to do well, the movie. Exactly. <laughs> Um, is it important to have a handsome head of the FB his FBI? Or? Yes, FBI, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, I, you know, uh, yes, yes it is. I think that's <laughs> one of the shortcomings now in the FBI, maybe the only one, is that when I met them, they didn't have very many, um, you know, John Hams. Do you find that your directing style changed the second time around since you were also in front of the camera in the town? This is also a New York City question from Paul Doro. Yeah, I think, you know, if you think of it like sort of running a marathon, the first time I ran the marathon, uh, I wasn't even sure I could finish, you know. And now, once I knew that the movie would actually get to the end without exploding, I kind of could focus on time or whatever. You know, I had, uh, it was still nerve-wracking. I still had a lot of anxiety. It was still very difficult, but uh, I guess I had a little bit more just confidence. And that meant that you could cast yourself as the lead? Exactly. I thought now I could exploit uh, my position as director by hiring myself with a little bit uh, less insecurity. Does that mean you get two paychecks? It means that the director talked the lead actor out of uh, taking any money, so oh. you could apply that to the budget. And you gave yourself all the good sex scenes, I noticed, too. I did, yeah. <laughs> there were two... Uh, Two love scenes, although one of them is very depressing and kind of, uh, you know. The one with Blake Lively? Yeah. You're the is. only person in the world that says a sex scene with Blake Lively. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can't stay. I don't want to stay. I want to go with you. Why can't I change? I could be a different person. This sort of, you know, the one you're like trying to get away from and you can't mm -hmm. quiet and we're both really bad for one another. And Blake was really good. She kind of got that that was the, the idea and she uh, really committed to it. And yeah, the idea was to not make it too sort of. I don't know, cheap and tawdry. But I'm right in saying nobody else in the movie has a sex scene, right? I did make sure no one else had one. I had one with, one with John, but I cut that out because I, it's disturbing. Pearl Harbor, Gigli, and Jersey Girl were <clears throat> borderline unwatchable. For someone who's so intelligent, how is these movies snuck by your radar? Um, I, well, I don't know what borderline means. That no. means you watched it, but then later was like, I can't watch this. Um, <laughs> You know, it's a tricky thing. I mean, you sort of like to think that um, when you make a movie, it's very easy ahead of time to know that something is going to be, you know, is going to work or it isn't. But, in, you know, in large measure, they're, they're kind of bets. You know, you have an instinct about it creatively. You like the director. You like the other actors. The story seems to be compelling. Um, and so you make that bet. And even when you, you think you're a favorite, um, you, can, you can come up short. There are, there are a number of movies that I've done out of however many, you know, that... Um, I haven't been proud of, and a lot that I have. And uh, you know, if people knew exactly what it took to make a movie that worked or to make a hit, you know, uh, they they would there would be more of them. It's uh, you know, you just sort of take your best shot. Um, I like Jersey Girl, by the way. The others, I, I think, it's maybe a fair criticism. 
Um, you have a colorful tabloid history, and now you have this whole new career as a very respected director and, you know, a reasonably respected actor. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> this, is the, this is, see, this is Time Magazine's downfall. <laughs> Um, this person, Jenny Gartner, from Rutland, Vermont, said, as far as many of us can tell, you appear to have come a long way as an artist since the benefit era. Are you a better actor and director now, or is it the drastic change in your life circumstances that has allowed us to see your true talents? I, was, I, I feel like I've always been the same person that I am now. I've always tried to live according to these values. I've always um, you know, worked hard and tried to make movies that work. Sometimes... Um, Things went well for me. Sometimes they didn't, but I, it's very hard for me to identify some, you know, turning point or to, to attribute uh, too much to it, other than you know, um, I'm happy now because you know uh, I've gotten a little bit older and a little bit more mature. But it was never like I was, you know, out of control or d doing crazy things. Uh, you know, I've sort of pursued the same track, and frankly, I'm just glad that, to find myself where I am. Okay, well, I want to thank Mr. Affleck for coming by today. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much.